Good morning and welcome to our next Bible study through the book of Job according to a seer's perspective. This chapter is very fascinating. It talks about the desire to speak to the Almighty, the splendor of his glory, but also the things that can hold us back from pursuing him, from speaking with him and hearing back from him. So I'm going to look through this passage and from the spiritual uh, point of view, from seeing in the spirit and understanding the dynamics of the spiritual realm, I'm going to talk about the, the flip side of wanting to speak to the Almighty God and the things that can hinder us from approaching him. And then talking about that splendor of God and how terrifying that can appear but then pushing through that that terror and that dread and into that conversation with God. But then coming out of that encounter with God, I'm going to look at some of the things that can hold us back from walking in the fullness of the fruit of encounters with God. And it's all here in Job chapter 13. So... I'm going to start by looking at verse 3. It says, I desire to speak to the Almighty and to argue my case with God. This is quite simple. It's quite explicit that the desire, the beginning, is to speak to the Almighty. For some, this can seem like an incredible thing. Can I actually speak with God? Can I, can I talk with him face to face? Can I hear his voice? And for the... For the Christian, or, or even the, uh, the non-Christian, God hears our voice. He hears our prayers. If we reach out to him and believe he is there, he will respond to that. But as a seer, it goes deeper than that. We can actually be drawn into the heavenly realms with God and speak and converse with him face to face. It comes out of that first desire. I desire to speak to the Almighty. And we can even argue our case with God. I've been through times where I've been drawn into the heavenly realms and I have spoken with the heavenly council. I've spoken with the almighty God and laid down my understanding, my perception of things and asked him for his wisdom and his insight. And I've had responses that have actually changed my um perception of things changed my understanding and I've even had the privilege of being shown the future and it wasn't what I expected and it did come to pass this is the wonder of the heavenly realms and what a great thing it is so no wonder the the desire expressed here in chapter 13 is to speak to the almighty but let's skip on, let's go to verse 4 to verse 7, which talks about things that can actually hinder us from approaching him, hinder us from hearing the voice of the Almighty, from uh, even filtering what heaven reveals to us and receiving it in a way which it didn't intend for us to receive. So let's have a look at things that can hinder us. It says... You, however, smear me with lies. You are worthless physicians, all of you. <laughs> this is <laughs> quite cherry stuff, eh? <laughs> if only you would be altogether silent for you. That would be wisdom. Hear now my argument. Listen to the pleas of my lips. Will you speak wickedly on God's behalf? Will you speak deceitfully for him? Uh, what this is talking about is... Job has this desire to speak with the Almighty, but he's feeling held back. So his heart, his spirit is reaching out for the, to speak to God, to speak to him in person. But his, his faith is drawn back by hearing these words, which he's, he's saying they are lies, they're, these people are worthless physicians, their words are not helping him. They're not encouraging him and spurring him on to get into the presence of the Almighty God. And he says to them, you should be silent, because for you that would be wisdom. 
And actually, this is this is quite a powerful spiritual principle that if we have these desires to encounter the Almighty God, but we are allowing our hearts and our minds and our soul and our spirit to actually receive things that that deter us from this, it could be messages of, of faith that actually lower our expectation of what to receive from God. Or it could be an attitude that, that we are assuming because of the, the uh, atmosphere we're in, because of the environment we're in, or because of the company we're keeping. If we keep hearing negative talk and all this uh, discouragement, it can actually hinder uh, our heart's expectation, our spirit's expectation of an encounter with the Almighty God. And so what it effectively does is we, we hook our desire and expectation of our spirit into the heavenly realms. But these things which cloud us and pull us back and, and drag us down, they, they effectively unhook us from that height and hook us into a lower expectation. And therefore we receive lower because we're not looking for that high expectation of encounter with God. And it, it is a an unseen spiritual issue. It's not a, a thing where, oh, I can say I believe I will have that encounter. It's a, where is my heart at? And that's the question for you today if you're listening to this. Where is your heart at? And that is a real deep question for the seer. I, I remember one time... I asked God to train me uh, in a deep encounter into the heavenly realms. And I very clearly heard him say back, now is not a good time for you to do this. I asked him why. And I felt him say, because I had an issue that I had offended someone deeply in the week and my heart wasn't right with this person. And I needed to go and make myself right with this person. Now I knew exactly what he was talking about. And so I said, okay, well, what will happen if I approach you and I, I approach the heavenly realms and I, I pursue you in an encounter right now, knowing I've got this issue going on, knowing you've just exposed the depths of my heart, knowing there is this darkness in my heart. And he said to me that I will be deceived because there are spirits around us in the heavenly realms, in the lower realms, that actually want to lead us astray. The Bible tells us they are masquerading as angels of light. Now this can sound scary, but actually it's a simple principle that Jesus spoke about. If you have an issue with somebody, go and sort it out because your relationship with people is so important. This is how you demonstrate the kingdom of God on this earth. So if we are actively knowing we have a problem with someone or we've offended someone or hurt someone or done something wrong and we haven't addressed that we haven't asked for forgiveness or we haven't made an attempt to make amends with that person or peace with that person then our spiritual activity it's going to be unhooked from that highest height and hooked into a lower uh, spiritual activity so the fruit of what we do won't be its fullest. We'll have some fruit, but it won't be the fullest of what God has for us. So basically, God is saying, sort out your heart first. Make sure your heart is pure before me. Now, this isn't talking about a spiritual purification or making yourself righteous. It's talking about the intention of your heart, your peace with other people. Make peace so far as it depends upon you so that your spiritual activity everything that you do won't be dragged down won't be hindered won't be clouded by all this stuff that can seep in to our heart and actually weigh it down let's make our hearts light in the presence of jesus christ and his love so that we can approach god and encounter the fullness of what he has for us so let's talk about what it says next it says in verse 11 would not his splendor terrify you would not the dread of him fall on you? This is incredible because the splendor and the glory of God in his utmost glory is terrifying. Some people have this idea that they're going to see the glory of God and they're going to be rejoicing and jumping up and down. And, 
And yes, there is a, a place and a time for that, but the actual splendor of God, it, it almost it goes into the very core of who we are when we see it. And it, it strips off us of everything we are so that everything is laid bare in our soul and we are just found before him. It's almost like we can describe it as our strength dissipates. We have no strength left in us. People who've encountered the splendor and the glory of God have fallen down on the floor as though they were dead. And then, and these, these stories are in the Bible. And when God touches them, they stand up. He gives them strength. And I remember when I first became a Christian, I was taken into the throne room of God. I was taken before his splendor and his glory. And I remember my whole body went limp and I could feel myself just limp. I had no, nothing in me to stand before him. But in his grace, he reached out, he held me and he filled me with his love. And I was filled with peace. The splendor of God, it is something that it, it causes everything to just lay it at his feet. It's, it's an incredible thing. The dread of God, it, it talks about the dread of God falling on these people. And if our, if our hearts are kind of clouded with doubt, clouded with hopelessness, crowd, crowded with things that counteract the utmost highest aspirations to speak with the Almighty, to be in His presence, then actually we can feel that dread clouding our hearts. We can suddenly think, oh gosh, you know, I don't know if I'm ready or prepared for, for entering into prayer, for being in the presence of the Almighty God. And sometimes that can happen. And this is an indication that our hearts have started to to actually shrink away from the light. It's an indication our hearts are hiding something deep inside that are afraid of God. It's an indication our hearts know that we, we've actually got some unrest in there, some something that doesn't align with the kingdom of God. And it might be an attitude, an attitude of thinking, oh gosh, I'm not worthy to come into this presence, which comes from the atmosphere, the environment we're in, the messages we're hearing that says you're not worthy for everything that God has for you. But actually you are. If you believe in Jesus Christ and you're a child of God, you're actually already made righteous, already made pure in the spirit. And God beckons you in to his deepest presence to speak with him. He wants to speak with you. So let's let's move on now. It says in verse 22, it says, Summon me and I will answer. Let me speak and you reply to me. Now this is addressing God. It's a, it's, this is the truth that God actually summons us into his presence. He says, Draw near to me with boldness and faith. I will answer. He will meet us when we approach him with boldness of faith. And the, the context of this is, let us speak and God reply to us. So this is the dynamic that God wants for us. He wants us to put aside all expectation. He wants us to set aside all doubt, all fear. And he says, come to me, my dearly beloved child. I have summoned you into my presence by my spirit. I want to be with you. I want to hear you talk to me. And I want to respond to you. Will you listen? Will you come to me? Let me draw you near. This is the heart of our God. Now this is effectively what he wants for everybody, is to come into his presence. Now doesn't this sound wonderful to think that we can sit in the presence of the Almighty God. We can sit in the, the presence of that terrifying splendor and actually find a love actually find that God wants to speak with us. He wants to hear us and reply to us. But then something else can happen to us. If we have the wrong environment, the wrong messages pouring into our hearts, pouring into our minds, we can actually see God in a very different light. It says in verse 26, you write down bitter things against me and you keep my feet in shackles. And what this is talking about is, after all of this acknowledgement of, yes, I have, I have desired to speak to the Almighty, he is 
in his splendor. It is terrifying, and yet he summons me into his presence. He wants to talk with me, and he wants to respond to me. He wants me to dwell in that glory of his, in that splendor of his. And if you want to look into that more deeply, look at the high priestly prayer of Jesus recorded in the Gospel of John. It talks about the desire of Jesus, that he wants us to be where he is. And where he is now is in the glory of the Almighty. But let's come back to the book of Job. So if we, if we listen to anything that actually can cloud our heart, can knock us out of that reality that we are in this desire of God to be where he is, then we can begin to believe things about God that aren't true. That he writes bitter things against us. That he recounts all of our wrongdoing. That he keeps a record of it. And then, because of that, places our feet in shackles. He traces our steps. And he makes our sin follow us. So if anything bad happens to us, we can believe it's because of something we have done wrong. Now, this is not true. If we believe in Jesus Christ, all our sin is forgiven. We confess our sin, we turn our hearts and our face towards the love of God, the light of God. His goodness flows into our life. Now, bad things happen and good things happen. Bad things happen to good people, bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. This is just what happens in this world. It's not because we've done anything wrong or anything right. It's just this world. But the spiritual principle of God is... If you're in Jesus Christ, you are totally forgiven. This is what Jesus says. If anyone believes in him, they will be having eternal life. They will be forgiven of all their sins. There is nothing bitter recorded against us by God. He only records good things about us now. He says, I love you. You are my child. I desire to be with you. I desire you to be with me. I desire you to speak with me and I desire to respond to you. I desire to show you the fullness of my glory. Will you come into my presence? This is the voice of God now. So this is an encouragement for us to have that desire to be in the presence of the Almighty, to seek him out, to pursue the heavenly realms, to keep our hearts and minds focused on what is high, what is above, to seek the mind of Christ, and not to be afraid of God, not to think that, oh, if I've done something wrong, he's going to hold it against me, but actually to apply the, the grace of God and say, if my heart is downcast, let me apply the love of God to my heart. If my heart knows it's done something wrong, let me go and seek peace in that situation. Let me find the love of God in all areas of my life. Let me seek an opportunity to do good, to show the grace and the love of Jesus Christ to others. This is the higher calling which God calls us to as his children. So may you be blessed and may you continue to pursue the Almighty and know that his love draws you deeper into his presence.